Hey, it's me again, Zonia from The Art of Stamping. Today I've got another product comparison for you, a review of different real brush markers. Precisely I'm comparing Zik Clean Color Real Brush Markers, which are all the rage right now with card makers and some lettering artists too, to the Akasha Sai Watercolor Brush Pens, which have quite similar characteristics. To be honest, I've hesitated for quite some time to do this review. I've already been asked for it months ago by a few blog readers, but when I did some research I quickly realized that there are one or two good videos on this topic out on YouTube and I thought another one wouldn't be necessary. Nonetheless, I've been asked repeatedly for this review so that I finally gave in and got this one made. I mostly did it for my German readers because it was them who asked. However, I didn't want the non-German speakers to stand back, so I also made this English version of my video and hope my review will be informative for you as well. So here we go. First up, some general facts about these markers. Both are manufactured in Japan. Their origins go way back into the history of traditional Japanese calligraphy and lots of mangaka also used them to draw and paint. The Ziggs are presently available in 80 different colors and can be bought separately or in sets of 6, 12, 24, 32, 48, 60 and 80 markers. As you can see here, I'm absolutely pleased with my set of 48 and I don't think I need any more of these markers. For a long time, the pens had only been available as imports in Germany and I think in some other European countries too. But by and by more online shops are carrying them here. The prices vary strongly and it makes no use for you that I list German prices here. I hugely recommend that you check the availability and the prices for those markers in your country carefully. Both brands ship their markers in functional resealable plastic cases which are ideal for carrying the markers with you wherever you go. However, I'm not quite sure how portable the Zix 80 set really is. Let's now take a look at the markers in detail. Whereas the Akasha Sai pens are longer and slimmer, the Zix are broader in diameter but also shorter than the Akasha Sai's. Both markers have a transparent cap which makes the different colors easily recognizable and they come with a clip or sort of a stop which ensures that the closed pens won't roll off the work surface easily. As I already said, both pens come with real bristles just as paintbrushes. You can recognize them quite well in front of the white background here. But I'll also be zooming in in a bit so that you can see it even better. The Akasha size brush nibs are a bit longer and broader at the end as those of the Ziggs. However, when coloring it doesn't make any difference to me at all. At the front all of the nibs are equally thin. The only advantage of the larger nibs is that when you're applying the highest possible pressure they draw thicker lines than the smaller ones, which might be of interest for lettering artists for example. Here you can see how flexible the real brush nibs with their separate bristles are. For reasons of comparison I'm also testing a distress marker against them, which too is filled with water-soluble ink, just as the Ziggs and the Akasha size. The distress marker nib, however, is inflexible because it is made of felt. And here you see what wonderful thin lines you can draw with the fine bristles of the real brush pens. I also laid down the broadest strokes you can achieve with both marker brands. And yes, I even dared to do some lettering in public as well and wrote down the letter H just to show you how dynamic the strokes can become with these pens. With my next test I'm exploring the blending characteristics of the markers. And I can say it right away, what this is concerned, both brands are convincing. However, it is important that you use suitable paper with these markers. I've repeatedly heard that people have difficulties blending their zigs and that's mostly because they're using the wrong paper. These markers contain a lot of ink, which is very watery and moist, and you're probably even blending it with water, sometimes a lot of water, and in that case it's really decisive to use watercolor paper. I've made very good experiences with bamboo paper by German manufacturer Hannemühle. It's a mixed media paper which is suitable for wet painting techniques as well. Another good choice would be the Canson XL watercolor paper. But let's look at the markers again. Here you see how well the colors dissolve and blend when touched with water. 
The beautiful thing about the real brush markers is that you can use them to directly paint and add color onto wet surface. This is impossible when using felt markers. You'll see that in a bit when I'll be trying to do this with a distress marker. The reason why this doesn't work is that, in contrast to the bristles, the felt is quite thirsty. Rather than releasing color, it soaks up the water from the paper. As a result, the color coming from the marker after having touched the wet surface is quite pale and watery and it takes a bit until it's running strongly again. Here you see the color charts I created for both the Ziggs and the Akasha size. For all of you who are interested, I'll add a download link to the blank charts on my blog in the related post, which I'll link to in the description area below the YouTube video as well. But that actually isn't my point here. With the help of these charts, I want to illustrate a few differences between the markers that haven't been covered yet. First of all, they clearly depict the huge color range of the zigs as compared to the Akasha size. And you can also see which colors are included in the set of 48 markers and what nuances are missing. If you are a lover of pink in all shades whatsoever, you might for example consider to buy the whole set of 80, because that color is really largely represented among the zigs. In comparison, the color palette of the Akasha size is rather small. Now some of you might assume that this is a serious disadvantage of these markers because more colors always imply more choices. However, this is not the case here. If you are looking closely, you might realize that there is no real red among the zigs, at least none which would still be red after being diluted with water. All of the reds in the color range of the zigs turn into some kind of pink when getting into contact with water. That, by the way, is an information I got from a block reader, Daniela of Daniela's Stempelschublade. As I don't own all reds from the Ziggs range, I wouldn't have realized this, but Daniela bought them all just because she was searching for the one real red in the range and was a bit disappointed to realize that there actually is none. The one lonely red in the range of the Akasha size, on the other hand, is perfectly red and even remains so after being diluted with water. Similar considerations apply to the greys. Birka who by the way published a great video on how to color with the zigs. It's German only, but I'll link to it anyway, just in case you want to have a look at it. Birka thus noticed that there is no neutral gray in the zigs range, even if one hue carries that name. The grays in my set of 48 are all cool or warm grays. One even is a bit greenish, but a real natural hue is missing. And the color names of the remaining grays not included in this set don't suggest that one could find one among the missing colors. Again, the Akasha size only have one grey in their range, but this one is perfectly neutral and therefore ideal, for example, to color in elephants and the like. Viewed in this light, the smaller set of the Akasha size definitely offers some serious advantages. What you should know before purchasing any of the brands is that none of the colors are light fast. Like most inks, the ink in these markers isn't UV resistant and will bleach out when exposed to the light over a longer period of time. To illustrate another downside of both marker brands, I have to zoom in a bit. Not only do the markers lack light fastness, they are also not color fast, which means that the colors may change their appearance when being diluted with water. Take for example the transformation of red to pink that occurs with the zigs. The larger color swatches are made for the Akasha Sai markers reveal further examples. The red-orange, for example, breaks down into yellow on the outer rim of the swatch. Dark blue turns into turquoise, violet to blue, and a reddish dark brown to a light ochre. Of course, you can make use of this drawback to obtain beautiful effects for backgrounds, for example. Sometimes, however, such an effect is not desirable, for example, when coloring skin. That's why you should be aware of this effect before coloring with these markers. Considering all facts, it's not easy for me to give a final verdict on these markers. On the one hand, I'm of course excited by the huge color range of the zigs, on the other, I wouldn't want to miss the pure hues that come with the Akasha size. If you can content yourself with only a few colors and aren't reluctant to mix your own hues then and again, you might be fully satisfied with the smaller set of the Akasha size. It is for sure a good alternative to the Zig. Well, that's it for today. I hope my review was informative and helpful for you. Should you have any questions or remarks, just comment on my blog or in the YouTube section below. I'll try to answer them as good as I can. For now, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to see more of my reviews and card making stuff. See you next time. Have a nice day. Bye.